I'm Jay Jackson. Welcome to WineNewsNavar.com. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing. San Francisco's ungrafted restaurant is famous for having two master sommeliers at the helm, along with great food and service. But half of the team recently spent a day in Inglewood, California, for an up-close and personal dinner that came with a lesson. Chris Gaither has poured an ocean of wine in a bottomless collection of stemware part of what it takes to earn the prestigious title Master Sommelier. He's one of fewer than 300 people in the world with the title, only four of them black. On this night, Gaither is fulfilling another goal, pouring Brown Estate and House of Brown Wines at Inglewood's popular 1010 Wine and Events. It was important for me to be here at 1010 Wine and Events because 1010 Wine and Events, they are amazing supporters of Brown Estate and House of Brown, and they have been for years. And they're also, uh, personally for me, uh, friends. And also, uh, I, I have really, really uh, enjoyed uh, uh, living vicariously through their success. And so it's been a, a very important uh, uh, goal for me to be here, to, to be able to bring a taste of Brown Estate and House of Brown to them, to their patrons, to their fans. And it's really exciting to be here. I know what you're thinking. You're looking at the color, you say, it looks like a pink and wine. The event was a marriage of the prestigious wineries Zins, Blends, and Rosés with 1010's expanded menu, a first for the wine bar and Brown Estate fans in Southern California, key to Gaither, who's taking the lead in wine education at Brown Estate. After earning the coveted pin in 2022, Gaither could have worked at any winery or restaurant of his choice, but he says Brown has long been his goal. As an alumna, alumnus of Morehouse College, uh, as an Atlanta, Georgia native, um, I came out here to California and uh, continued my studies with wine. And I, through, through that, through working in the wine industry, through working at, uh, at, at restaurants, uh, at some of the best restaurants, I came across Brown Estate and discovered Brown Estate and became a big fan and, and fell in love with the, the, the story, with the wines and with the family and have been friends with the family for many years. And so it's always been a goal of mine to eventually work with Brown Estate at one point in my life. And the reason why is because I've always wanted to be on the leadership team of a prominent winery in Napa Valley. Brown Estate was the only one I wanted to be a part of. And so it means a lot to me to be a part of what they're doing and work with the family and represent the wines. It's literally like Jordan is in the building. For 1010, Coroner Lee Jones is one more bucket list item checked off. We are so proud that they came here because this is literally one of the first vineyards that we visited. Leslie and I, my sister, when we went to Napa Valley, and for them to come here and do this dinner with us and master some Chris is just amazing. So grateful. Gaither says while pouring and teaching are important to him, representing the African American community in the wine space carries equal weight. Black Americans represent a huge amount of, of resources financially to the wine industry. And there are not a lot of, of companies that market directly to us. And, and also, uh, despite having so much buying power, um, less than 1% of the wineries that exist in the U.S. are black owned. And so uh, Brown Estate is, is doing a lot to, to be a part of that conversation. They're the first and only black owned estate winery in Napa Valley. And when I say estate winery, I mean that uh, the, the, they, they own their vineyards and on the property along with their vineyards is, the, is their facilities to uh, produce the wine and store the wine and bottle the wine. And so that's, that's, that's huge and that's very, very rare. And uh, it's an exceptional story in uh, not just black history, but American history. For Chantel Ronalds and Christopher Bates, it was a night to remember. I have been trying to get to one of Brown Estate's uh, pairing dinners and 1010 did not disappoint. We had uh, delicious food um, to experience pairings with the Chris Gaither was just absolutely a treat and uh, it was worth the drive. We drove over 90 minutes to be here and uh, we will do this again and again. Oh, it was one of the most amazing wine dinners I've ever done. And uh, I'm so excited that people, uh, of course, people love Brown Estate, they love the wines. Uh, I think this gave 
a, a lot of, of, of people a little bit deeper understanding of the story and why Crown Estate is so important. And it gave them a different uh, idea of how to enjoy the wines, especially pair it with food. So, um, and also the House of Brown wines are a completely different brand that, that, we, that we developed. It's still family owned. And uh, I think it gave, that, that, that was really, really special. People really, really, um, they had a chance to really uh, enjoy the House of Brown wines, the Chardonnay, the Rosé and the Red Blend, and understand the, the ideas behind them. People had a great time. They had a fantastic time. That's why they're still here. <laughs> Gaither's wife and partner at Uncrafted Restaurant and Glue Glue Wine Bar is also a master psalm, one of fewer than 30 female master psalms in the world. New Napa numbers, Divine Wine in San Luis Obispo, and Cash for Crops in France. Here are the top stories for this month's Wine in a Minute. Good news for the Napa Valley tourism industry. A new study shows tourism numbers are nearly at pre-pandemic levels. Some 3.5 million visitors came to the region in 2023, according to Visit Napa Valley, the county's tourism marketing board. That's almost at the 2018 peak of 3.9 million people. But spending surpassed the 2018 level, adding $2.9 billion to the Napa economy. San Luis Obispo has a new crop king and its wine grapes. For the first time in years, wine grapes were the number one agricultural product in the county in 2023. Commissioners say heavy rains added up to a bigger than expected harvest. Strawberries, cattle, broccoli and avocados rounded out the top five list. In France, the government wants to spend 120 million euros to uproot 30,000 hectares of vines according to the International Organization of Vine and Wine. The country has 10% too many vines, causing the prices of wine to fall. The proposed plan would pay farmers 4,000 euros for every hectare removed and ban replanting until 2029. And finally, South Africa comes to Southern California. I got a chance to talk with one of the hottest names in the international wine space, whose brand is making worldwide waves. And Siki Biela flew more than 10,000 miles to pour this glass of wine. She's the owner and founder of Aslina Wines, the South African brand that is becoming the face of black South African winemakers and one of the hottest sellers at 1010 Wine and Events in Inglewood. Coming to 1010 every time I come to LA, it's like coming back home. It is, it, it's very exciting. It's very, the vibe actually, it's amazing. And meeting people who are drinking our wines, you know, and especially when I've got our wine sitting like this, the Aslina brand just been showcased. It's amazing. Running an international brand, Biella doesn't get to leave the winery much, so she takes full advantage of it when she can. She says telling people about her wine face to face is a passion. Seeing the smiles is a joy. How's it make you feel to see all of these Americans enjoying your wine? <laughs> I, I think this is always for me a cherry on top. You know when you're making the wine, you're in the cellar, you're making the wine, but when you're watching and looking at people when they're taking, enjoying a sip of what you produce, it's so fulfilling. It is like, it's just, it's, it's, it's heartwarming, it's, it's, it's beautiful. With eight years under her belt, the brand has been steadily growing. And with people lining up for a sip and to hear her speak, brighter days are clearly ahead. It is very important for Aslina wants to be here and for me to also to visit because I think this is a space where people, they come to congregate. So we get an amazing exposure actually to, for people in LA to be able to experience our wines. All right, and that's going to do it for this episode of WineNewsNoir.com. Please remember to visit our sponsors on our website. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing. I'm Jay Jackson. Cheers.